How you doing everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Transformers Rise of the Beasts. This was directed by Stephen Capel Jr. and stars Anthony Ramos and Dominique Fishback, along with the voice talents of Peter Cullen, Ron Perlman, and Peter Dinklage. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, no, not that story. The homeworld of the Maximals was destroyed by Unicron and his Terrorcon soldiers. A few Maximals escaped using something called the Transwarp Key, which basically allowed them to flee through a wormhole, and they ended up on Earth where they have been hiding in plain sight. The Autobots could potentially use the Transwarp Key to return home to Cybertron, but the Terrorcons could use it to summon Unicron to Earth, and that's not going to be a good day for anyone. So the Autobots and Maximals must stop the Terracons with the help of a couple of humans, who are thankfully not annoying jackasses. One of the Autobots, however... This is a follow-up to Bumblebee, which is really the first live-action Transformers movie that I thought was genuinely great. The five movies that came before ranged from okay to shit. I personally think Rise of the Beasts is better than those five movies, but it's a step down from Bumblebee. Both of our human heroes are perfectly fine, though I do have to question the backstory of Ramos' character. He is supposed to be former army, and he does not act like any soldier I have ever met. And that detail about his past really doesn't add much to his character. Almost every detail about this character amounts to nothing until the very end of the movie when something completely out of left field happens. I don't want to spoil it, but... I guess time will tell if this ends up being a good decision or a really, really bad one. Fishback's character was perfectly fine. She's sort of a history archaeology nerd, and that actually does factor into the plot, so she has a reason to be there. Ramos is there because the plot says he should be. The voice acting was pretty good overall. I mean, you're never going to hear me say a bad word about Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. And we have Ron freaking Perlman as Optimus Primal, two very powerful voices playing off each other there. And I thought Peter Dinklage did a pretty good job as the villain Scourge, but Peter Dinklage is good in everything. The plot is a little convoluted, especially as we get to the climax. And sticking to something that was a little closer to the original Beast Wars storyline might have been a better choice. Combining the G1 Autobots with the Maximals is a lot on its own, but then they also have to throw in Unicron and the Terracons. And somehow Optimus Prime knows who Unicron is. This is never explained. But anyway, either one of those two elements could have been its own movie. They could have thrown the Predacons in there as the villains, and it would have been fine. Adding in the stuff about Unicron just seems unnecessary, and I may have said something similar about The Last night. Speaking of, while this is better than the Bayformers series, it does make some of the same mistakes. They do not have annoying human characters this time around, but they do have an annoying robot character in Mirage, voiced by Pete Davidson. I was not a huge fan of this character. That dude is just constantly quipping and is not as funny as the movie thinks he is. The Autobots, Maximals, and Terracons are designed pretty well and are easily distinguishable, but the Terracons do have an army of Scorponok robots that all look identical. And our heroes have to fight a whole mess of them in the climax on what is basically a giant field of dirt. Whole lot of gray robots against a brown backdrop, and it just looks bland as hell and goes on for far too long. Most of the action sequences were fine, and I am happy that we have robots fighting in our movie about robots fighting. But the big fight at the end was kind of a mess. And once again, and I cannot believe they are still doing this, I won't say who, but we do have a character that dies that can be easily resurrected later. And when this character dies, I remember thinking, you know. I should feel something here, but I don't, because I know it ain't going to matter. And I was right. You can't fool me now, Transformers. You're 14 years too late for that. I don't know how they have not figured this out yet, but a character's death has to mean something, or there is no point. It is still one of the better Transformers movies, but it is, like I said, a pretty big step back from Bumblebee. It was fine, but a little disappointing. Might be worth seeing as a matinee, but I would not pay full price. And that's all I have to say about Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Till next time, take care.